Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at setting up iSCSI targets and iSCSI clients in order to be able to pass a ZFS Zball from my ZFS server over to Proxmox and be able to use it there. So let's let's dig in and see what we got to do to make this work. So I'm what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and create the Zval. Uh, this I've already done this, so I'm going to just go ahead and create a dummy one, and then I'll delete it. So uh, just so you can see how it's done. So you do a, a ZFS create, and then you give it a minus capital V, which tells us this is a Zval. The one T is a one terabyte reservation for the for this Zval. So in other words, I want uh, ZME Zball 2 to be a terabyte in size total. Now it won't allocate this. Um, it, it's not going to allocate it. So okay. So if I do a ZFS list, it should show two of them now. Uh, the one we're going to be using today is that one, and this one is the one I just created. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that because I don't need it. So the next thing we need to do that we are all up to date and that we don't have any patches that we need to apply. So the next thing I'm going to do is do a search on TGT. And that is our target. And so it's right here. As you can see, it's been installed. So that's the only one you need to install is that right there. That will put out all the software that we're going to be using in order to create the iSCSI targets today. And I am running, this is, this is Debian 12. And, uh, and this is my ZFS server. As you can see, I have, it's a four drive RAID Z1. It has a mirror for <clears throat> my intent log. And then I have two drives for the L2 cache. I, I don't need that other one, but it's, it's sitting there. I don't have a use for it, so I just threw it in the cache for now. All right, so I, all we have to do is do that. And then of course, that's already installed. Okay, so I, I just entered the TGT admin command. This is iSCSI, it's a new operand. Modus target. We've assigned a arbitrary ID to the temporary. The target ID is one. Target name. This is the fully qualified name that we just talked about. What I'm doing right now is I'm validating to make sure that it sees what we just created. So this is what you should see on on after you've done that initial command. It just has the host information. So yeah. Anyway, uh, that's all we needed to do there. At this point, we're done with the target, but now we need to assign the drive, the actual backing store that supports this iSCSI target. So to do that, we uh, well we uh, enter the same command again, tgt admin. I'll, I'll catch it in a minute here after I enter the command and find it doesn't work. But the mode is logical unit, and we give it the TID of one again. This time we choose a LUN. I can't use zero. That's taken. That's the host controller. So usually we just start with the next number, which is one. We need to assign the backing store, the backing store, which will be, um, this will be the actual raw device. So this has to have the dev, the pool name, and then the Zball name that we created earlier for the, in the ZFS command. Yeah, <laughs> it's not going to work with TGF. It's not Friday. Okay, there we go. So now if I do that show command again, we should have the host controller plus the backing store. So, yeah, this is the drive itself. And it shows it's a 10 terabyte drive. It has a block size of 512. And it shows the path, which is the dev ZME Zball, which is what it needs and actually to be able to use this. So as far as setting this up, this is all we need to do for establishing that. 
Now, if you want to assign a, an account in for, to this where somebody has to log in in order to be able to use this resource, you can do that. But I'm, I'm, I'm not going to show you that today. Let me know in the comment below if you want to see that. I'll show you. But it's, it's not that hard. It's just that there's some other things that you're going to have to do if you enable that that password. ACL also allows you to do uh, RBAC controls for the, the volume itself. At this point, we should be able to find the actual port number, and that should be 3260. There it is. And that is the iSCSI target. It should, unless there was, I just missed it or something, but right where my cursor is. So, all good. Firewall's open. The next thing that we want to do is we need to dump our configuration because right now if I were to restart my server, I would have a problem because all of this, all of the configuration would be forgotten. It hasn't been saved. So we're going to save it off to a location in the Etsy directory called slash tgt slash targets.conf. And it doesn't have a lot in there. It just has the target ID and the backing store. And that's all it needs to construct this. And you can see it's there. And so if I reboot the machine now, it will persist this uh, TGT connection. But without that, it, we would come up and it wouldn't find it. So if you have that problem, go check and make sure that you have dumped the TGT to your target.conf. Also make sure your firewall is open. So we're going to go over to the, this is my Proxmox host. Yeah, I know it's named Zen. People always ask me, why do you call it Zen? Well, all right. So I'm going to run, this is, now this software has already been installed. This is the iSCSI ADM. This is the client side of iSCSI. I'm doing a mode discovery which is sending a ping basically across the network to look for targets. And the type is, I need to see the send targets on the, the server, basically. The portal is the IP address of the iSCSI target. So that's Blue Ice. And then it should confirm it with the IP address, the port number, the LUN, and then it should show me the address. So that's what you get back. And that works. That is definitely seeing our iSCSI target. So if we get this far, you're in good shape because that means we can see the target and the iSCSI client recognizes it correctly. If you don't get this, check your firewall. <laughs> yeah, check your firewall. All right, so next step. All right, so I'm going to go to PVE, and the file we want to edit is storage.cfg. If, if I can spell it right. There we go. I've already got one in here that's the the uh, different computer that I set up an iSCSI for when I was testing all this. Where did you go? Where did you go? Oh, I had to get that. So, yeah, you'll, you'll need that. You'll need your uh, your target ID. That would help, yes. So let's try yanking it again and then putting it this time. All right, so I copied it down. I'm going to change the name to something else. And then I'm going to change the IP address of the other target server. And then the target name. We'll just re, we'll copy paste it in. There we go. And then the content images, I'm going to get rid of that and make none because I, I, I don't want anything being able to write to the iSCSI directly. Now, the one up above looks like that images got put in there by the, when we created the LVM, which is down below for it. So, uh, But we're, we're going to use the GUI to do this. Could we have done this with the iSCSI target with the GUI? Yeah, we could have. But then we would have had to go in here anyway and modify the content because it probably would have stuck something in here by default. So, yeah, I don't think it'll let you... I don't think the GUI will let you out without specifying the content that you want to store on the volume. So, 
Yeah, yeah, so that's why I came in here and typed none. It doesn't have none, but the... All right, so let's go bring up the GUI. I should be able... It should show up on the list here. Yeah, you can see it at the bottom. ZNAS is down there at the bottom along with MyNAS. Uh, you can also see the capital ZFS LUN1. That is the LVM client for the other machine, not this one. So, so we'll have... Each ZFS pool will have a, uh, a volume that we can use. So there's my volume, and it only has a summary and permissions. That's it. It's up there. There you go. You're getting warmer. There it is. All right. So now we want to add, and you have your choice between LVM and LVM thin. I would, I mean, for this, I'm going to use LVM because I, I want full control. Besides, it's not going to make any difference <laughs> whether. It's not going to fully allocate it out anyway. So I'm going to call this one ZBlue and LUN1. I don't know why I'm stopping. There we go. And now we need the existing volume group. So we need to pull this list down, and it's ZNAS. And then it should drop in some other stuff. That's generated from the query. So it's pulling that across. Now, this is just whatever information you want to use to identify this volume group. L blue, LUN1. No, there's no dash. There you go. Nope, got to share it. Got to enable it. Got to share it. Otherwise, we can't use it for other VMs. There you go. Now, the, the content, you know, the nodes doesn't matter. You can restrict it. To one of the nodes on here, if you, but I only have one, so it doesn't really matter. So disk image and containers, that's the only two choices you get for this. Which I I guess you could go back in and add the others to it. I've done that before and it seems to work. So you can see that it's marked shared and enabled over there. And there's my VM disk, there's my CT disk, which are for the containers. Those are, yeah, those are, those are not Docker containers. Let's go find out if we can actually use this thing. Let's set up a VM that's going to use that as my storage pool. So this is just the, where do I find the ISO image to install from? So we got the Debian finally. And now we'll go ahead and go next. I'm going to leave all that alone. And this is good. It's already figured out to use LBlue. It's alphabetical order, so every time it's always going to pick this one. If you want the other one, you're going to have to drop it down and, and fix that. Uh, so we're done. So now waiting for it to build out the VM. It's 106 down there. There we go. It's built out. So now we need to start it and boot into it. Open the console up so we can see what it's doing. We would, As soon as I hit go here and it starts to load, if anything, if it had found anything wrong, it would be spitting ears all over the place. So good chance it, it has, it's grabbed the volume, it's opened the file already. So it just hasn't written anything into it yet. And it won't until it gets through all this preliminary storage stuff. Yeah, we're not gonna do a root, so not for this one. I'll go ahead and remind you. Give me a password. Set up time. It's getting ready to partition the drive. So I found it, because otherwise it would have blown up. It's, I don't know what you're doing, but it's not blown up. It's working. So we're gonna really make sure we're gonna write to it. So now we know if we can write to it or not. We know we can read it. Like, can we write it? Oh yeah, we can definitely write it. And it is definitely writing to it. So that's good. That's a good sign. Things are working good. We don't have any permission problems sticking like, their ugly heads up. I had a friend of mine at one time, he said, and he was right. He said, 90% uh, of the problems that you run into with Unix and Linux is permissions. They're either not set right, and they're not allowing you to read or write, or they're too broad. <laughs> and they're allowing other people to read and write into the file that you didn't want them to read and write into, especially write into. He was trying to say it was nice. It's getting ready to partition the drive. So it found it, uh, because otherwise it would have blown up and said, I don't know what you're doing. But it's not blowing up. It's working. So we're going to really make sure we're going to write to it. So now we know if we can write to it or not. We know we can read it, but can we write it? Oh yeah, we can definitely write it. So, let's reboot. Hit it. Now, for the test. Oh, that looks good. 
So far, so good. It's got the drive. It's reading it. And we're up. Well, let's make sure we're really up. And we are. There you go. That's really all there is to it. Um, once, yeah, once you've got that in there. And, yeah, we can look and see. You can see what the status. Because we have the green line is the total size. The, the, the blue right there on the bottom of that chart, that's the used amount. Not very much of it's been used. Uh, yeah, so about 3% according to that. So let's recap for a little bit as to what we've done here today. So the first thing we did was we went to my ZFS server and we constructed a ZVOL. A ZVOL is nothing more than a, a ZFS volume that is taken out of the same space or the same pool as you as you also create data sets and so forth with it. So it doesn't allocate it all until it gets used. But we can use it to export that drive as an iSCSI target and then be able to share that resource with as many servers as we want, including Proxmox. And then the second half of this, we went over to Proxmox and we defined the target. We did a, a check. We scanned the target and made sure that it saw our, our, um, our identity, our identifier for that iSCSI target. And we were able to see that. So then we went in and we configured first Proxmox manually using the Etsy PBE storage.config file. The reason we did that was because we wanted to use an LVM uh, file system on top of it. And the reason for that is iSCSI does not have any file system whatsoever to manage it. So you can get yourself into a little bit of trouble if you're trying to share it with multiple VMs or even multiple servers. So we want that ability of LVM to be able to handle the locking and so forth. So that was the reason why we did that. So um, once that was done, then we actually created that LVM and then we installed Debian to see if it would work and it did. And it was able to read and write to that iSCSI volume that was across the network. Now normally, our, the Proxmox people recommend that you create a network that is dedicated to the iSCSI traffic. I didn't do that. My network isn't all that busy, but if this were a production environment, yes, I most certainly will need to do that. If your network is busy, then you might want to do a dedicated channel for your iSCSI, but I don't have an extra 10 gig to lay it around to be able to do that with. So uh, I don't know, maybe one gig might be enough for this, but yeah, it might be good enough. It is rotational media after all, so it doesn't need a lot of bandwidth, but uh, yeah, that's what we did. So well, I'm going to leave things right there, and then I'll probably come back next time with a brief discussion about Proxmox's high, avail high availability clusters. Anyway, I hope to see you next time. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to... Uh, and try to put that together maybe the next week or two. We'll see. Uh, you know, I want to thank my Patreons and also the channel members. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you also if you got this far in the video, and I hope to see you all next time, and bye for now. <music>